Well, this has been an interesting finance board. And I think it marks uh, an important experience in the life of the board. I have had the uh, privilege of sitting on this board in a variety of positions since 2002. So I've seen a lot of different dynamics, um, a, different, a lot of different forms of reports, and, um, and watched a lot of different boards try to figure out how best to help support the church in its stewardship of our world church assets. And I feel like that this board, for a variety of reasons, some of which are circumstances that are out of all of our control, has reached a whole new level of participative leadership in those stewardship responsibilities. And so it's out of the depth of my heart that I want to um, extend a very heartfelt thank you. This has been really difficult in many ways. We've had over 50 reports to work our way through and a variety of complex financial circumstances to fully understand. Not to mention having to deal with our own emotional responses to some of the trend data that can be read in a very discouraging way. And in the midst of that, trying to remember and listen to the leadings of the Holy Spirit and to discover anew what God is trying to help us do. So on behalf of the First Presidency and the presiding bishopric, we thank this World Church Finance Board. Your role is critical to the financial health of the church, and we can't do our job without your help. You've worked really hard this weekend, and you did it with love and grace while exercising very wise stewardship. As you know, Based on World Conference Resolution 1306, the board's role includes both the review and acceptance of the annual independent audit report for the World Church, as well as the review and approval of the worldwide mission budget. At this meeting on June 3rd and 4th, World Church leaders provided the board a series of reports about both mission and finances to help you fulfill your responsibilities. The World Church Finance Board, in approving the fiscal year 2018 worldwide mission budget, first reviewed the fiscal year 2016 and 2015 independent audit report for the World Church and Graceland University. The board also heard the following highlights about the audit from our auditing firm. We received an unqualified opinion. This means the auditor indicated our financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. The audit report also included the deconsolidation of Canada, the change in the appraisal process and write down of real estate assets, the increase in the retirement liability due to the decrease in the assumption about the long-term rate of return on investments, the change to our accounting for endowments to discontinue and reverse the inflation adjustment previously added each year 
to permanently restricted net assets. And lastly, the impact on net assets of using a spending rate on the endowments as income to the budget when the majority of the investments would, were in real estate without significant cash income. Now that the World Church Finance Board has accepted the fiscal year 2016 and 2015 audit report, it will be made available to the church. It will be posted in English on the church's website at www.cofchrist.org and it will be there as soon as our web team can get it posted, but for sure by the end of June. In addition to the independent audit report, the board received and reviewed supporting financial statements to gain a clearer understanding of the World Church's finances. You did an awesome job following us through a variety of reports, struggling with understanding the story behind the numbers. This story also includes our responsibility to both current and future retirees of the church and provided a number of what that responsibility is as of June 30th, 2016. This review made it very clear that although the net asset reduction from the end of fiscal year 2015 to the end of fiscal year 2016 was very disappointing, it does not directly impact current operations supported through the worldwide mission budget. Similarly, as the board looked at possible additional reductions for fiscal year 2017 income, there was support for proceeding with the current level of ministries and services in the fiscal year 2000 worldwide mission budget. This decision did not come without the expression of some level of concern. However, the decision was made to proceed with the proposed budget for 2018. As we talked about 2017, we identified two significant factors that could contribute to expected additional decreases in net assets as we close our books on 30 June. The first is a change in how the church tracks gift plans originally made for the worldwide mission endowment. They include an indication of future contributions. To simplify the financial statements so that everyone has a clearer understanding of our current circumstances, these future contributions will be accounted for in the fiscal year when the gift is received. They will no longer be carried in our accounts receivable balance. So this will result in a write down this fiscal year. The second change that we anticipate is that the presiding bishopric is still working with our actuaries to get the most realistic understanding of the church's retirement responsibility. Additional assumption adjustments may occur as we prepare the fiscal year 2017 calculations. The presiding bishopric is also continuing the call for an annual appraisal of the unsold portions of Harmony, which is the 3,250 acres in eastern Jackson County, Missouri. The presiding bishopric will use a different appraiser this year 
to continue to gain a deeper understanding of how appraisers are assessing the market in this area. This could lead to another change in our book value, but we are proceeding with this activity to better prepare the presiding bishopric to be able to negotiate sales of this property in the next year or so. The board reviewed detailed cash flow models to understand what is being done to manage our liquid assets. It is important for the board to remember that the presiding bishopric continues to work the way forward plan. There still may be an additional reduction in net assets as the presiding bishopric acts to change the trends that currently face us. The board reviewed expenditures for the current fiscal year. It was noted that our budget managers are doing an excellent job of working within their approved budgets. Our expenses are being well contained. However, the board reviewed three income areas that are under budget for fiscal year 2017. Those are worldwide mission ties, undesignated bequest, and other income. Worldwide mission ties were down in the spring. The key to sustaining our current level of mission around the world is how the church financially supports that mission through worldwide mission ties. The board discussed the plan the presiding bishopric implemented to cut several major expenses, such as capital expenditures and staff development, with the goal of keeping our budget within the available income for fiscal year 2017. At our November meeting, we will report to you the fourth quarter results of this fiscal year. The income assumptions for the proposed fiscal year 2018 worldwide mission budget were originally approved at our February 2017 board meeting. This was a new process for the board's involvement in developing the proposed budget. World Church leaders found this collaborative process very helpful, and we hope the board also recognized your early involvement in the overall process. Since the February meeting, additional information led World Church leaders to question the income projections that had been provided to the board in the proposed 2018 budget. The board also expressed concerns about the income projections. As a result of the concerns lifted up on Saturday, the First Presidency and Presiding Bishopric brought forward a budget amendment to reduce the budget by $0.75 million. After much discussion and heart-wrenching considerations of our sense of call to respond to mission, while faithfully attending to the stewardship of the church's assets, the board decided to not approve the amendment. The board ultimately approved the original proposed fiscal year 2018 worldwide mission budget at the level of $18.7 million. The board expressed trust in leadership's close monitoring of projected income 
as the fiscal year starts to unfold and encourage leadership to make adjustments as needed should income projections not occur as planned. We want the board to hear that we have listened to your concerns and we will continue to closely monitor the income. And I can assure you that if the income does come in in more of the worst case scenario, we will take the appropriate actions and use our November and February meetings to keep you up to date. At the same time, we are commissioning you to go forth into the church and share the good news stories of what is happening and what can happen when people generously share through worldwide mission ties. What happens next is not just in the hands of the presiding bishopric or the first presidency or the Council of Twelve. It is in all of our hands. Go and encourage people to give at the levels that they gave at in calendar year 2016. We don't need to dig that deep. We just need to repeat what we did in 2016. And I know we can do it if we can get the message out to the church. As part of that message sharing process, the fiscal year 2018 budget will be posted on the church's website and printed in the July-August Herald. In addition to all of the various reports that we reviewed to help us make decisions about worldwide mission ties, we also reviewed the Bridge of Hope project, including Bridge of Hope tithes pledges that have been made out of people's abundance to help us resolve our retirement responsibility so that we can get back to building up our endowments. In addition, we reported to the board that at this time, there has been no update regarding sales of historic assets or other properties that might also help with the Bridge of Hope project. So as we look to the five points from the Way Forward Plan, first, there are two risk factors in the approved 2018 Worldwide Mission Budget. The first is the availability of undesignated bequests. We will know the status of that income line by August, and we will make appropriate adjustments should it not meet the goal that was projected in the budget. And the second is the continued support and growth of worldwide mission ties. Again, I can't underline enough how important word of mouth is in helping the church have the opportunity to respond. One of the many statistics that has floated across your mind and through your papers this weekend is how when the mission funding team talks to people about what their generosity can do, even for people who choose to not make a pledge for increased giving, the overall average giving increases and has increased by 18% by those who've had those conversations. So sharing the stories and inviting people to be a part 
is so very important. Second, the new budget does not include expansion around the globe. Although there continues to be opportunities for new ministries in almost every country where we are currently active and countries where we have not yet gone, we will continue the level of ministries and services provided in the current year. And we are not expanding until we can satisfy all of our financial needs and strengthen our financial future. Third, the presiding bishopric will continue to evaluate the prospect of selling some historic assets and other properties titled in the bishopric's name in the USA and around the world. As stated previously, these assets will be sold only if a satisfactory price can be negotiated, and net proceeds will be used to fund the Bridge of Hope project. Four, the church's ongoing support of worldwide mission ties through sustainable giving is critical to continued ministries and services. I know I've said this at least five times, but worldwide mission ties are what fund the budget. And the level of ministries and services that we provide will follow the trend of that tithing. In addition to that, for those who have the blessing of experiencing financial abundance, we are encouraging them to give of that abundance to Bridge of Hope tithes so the church can fund our annual retirement responsibility, discharge debts, and eventually build up our endowments. And lastly, number five, as requested by World Conference Resolution 1314, the First Presidency and Presiding Bishopric are creating resources to support priesthood and leaders in developing disciples who understand faithful tithing as part of the six principles of a disciple's generous response. Stay tuned for those resources in the next year or so to be made available in three languages. Despite the many financial challenges that are before us and that me and my colleagues struggle with every single day, I live as a hopeful disciple of Jesus Christ. I continue to be grateful beyond words for the generous response of the church through worldwide mission ties. I am humbled by people's willingness to help strengthen the church's financial future through Bridge of Hope ties. And I am encouraged by the response of seekers and new disciples who encounter the living Christ through community of Christ. I continue to sense the Holy Spirit guiding and leading us. And it is my testimony that the mission of community of Christ is not finished. If we will faithfully follow, God will help us build a bridge of hope to the future. May it be so. Amen. <laughs>